In this presentation, we are going to discuss the DHIS2 customization database. This is the second database system that we have created for you in order to do your customization exercises throughout this module. It's a bit different when compared to TrainingLand, and we just wanted to describe this in a bit more detail. The DHIS2 customization database is essentially a blank DHIS2 system that has been created in order for you to perform the exercises during this customization module. This has been pre-configured in order to create an optimal environment as possible for performing your own configuration practice during the exercises. We will discuss and introduce some new concepts in this presentation. However, we will not get into a detailed discussion regarding how to set up these various components that we are showing you within DHIS2 during this academy. If you're interested in learning more about the concepts that we're discussing here, have a look at the Customization Academy information. So the first thing that we're going to discuss is the concept of DHIS2 sharing. Previously, we had discussed sharing in terms of outputs, so sharing favorites and dashboards with other user groups, for example. The concept of sharing, however, can further be extended to the various items and objects that we create in DHIS2. So we refer to these items as metadata, and this could be items such as data elements or data sets, as an example. And we will show you how to create these during this module. What this means essentially is that we can control which users have access to which objects in the system. At its core, sharing is separated into public versus private access. This is similar to before when we shared our favorites and our dashboards. You will notice this distinction between public and private objects when you are navigating the DHIS2 maintenance application. And we will show you this very quickly in a moment. For the purposes of this academy, you have the ability to create private objects. What this means is that all of the items you create will only be seen by yourself and the system or course administrators. None of the other participants can interact with any of the objects that you create during this module. The type of setup that you will see here is largely achieved by creating a user role that allows the user to only create private objects in the system. So let's have a look at what we mean when we're discussing this type of sharing within DHIS2. What we're looking at now are data elements in the data element management application. And we will discuss the data element management application in much more detail later on. What I've done is logged in as one of the course administrators. This administrator has access to all of the data elements that have been created by the various participants within this course. We can see that there is a column public access. All of these data elements are marked as no public access. What this means is that these data elements, which have not yet been shared with other user groups, can only be seen by the course administrator, as well as the individual who created this particular data element. If I right click on one of the data elements and go to sharing settings, we can see that by default, public access is turned off. We see that both can view and can edit are not selected. When we create the various objects during this customization module, they will all be set to private, which means it will say no public access in the column beside the item that we have created. This means that other users won't be able to interfere with what you are doing. As an example, now I've logged in with a user who's enrolled in the course. This user cannot see any of those other data elements that were created by the other participants. This particular user will only be able to see new objects that they create within the DHIS2 system. Essentially, the DHIS2 customization database acts as your own system when you are creating objects. You will only see the items that you have created yourself and will not be able to interact with the objects that other users have made. Another item that we will discuss is organization units. What we have done in DHIS2 is create a new organization unit for every person that has enrolled in this particular course. This is automatically created when the user registers in this DHIS2 customization database. We have done this so other users do not see the organization units that you are creating. Let's show you an example of what has been done in the system itself. 
We will discuss organization unit management within this module. All we wanted to do for now was show you the organization unit that gets generated when you register in this particular DHIS2 system. What it does is take the email that you have registered with and creates a root organization unit. What this does is ensure that other users will not be able to see the organization units that you have created during the course of your assignments. The last item that we will discuss in relation to the customization database are datasets. We will discuss the creation of datasets later on within this module. When we create datasets, the user role must be updated. You will see this in action during the course of the dataset creation demonstration. We do not discuss user management in a lot of detail within this fundamentals level course. As we cannot only give partial access to modify the user role, you will not be able to perform this function directly later on. We have done this because if someone modifies the user role by mistake, this could affect other users' interaction with the system, as it may not allow them to perform certain functions that they should be able to do. Because of this, we create an empty dataset for you to modify and assign it to your user role when your account is created in this DHIS2 customization system. In DHIS2, when you go to Dataset Management, you will see that a dataset is created using the email that you registered with. This is similar to the organization units. You will be able to edit this dataset later on when you perform your assignment. The main reason that we have done this is because we need to assign the dataset to a user role. As mentioned, we do not discuss user management in a lot of detail in this particular course. So we have taken care of assigning this dataset to your user role in the background, as this is done automatically for you already. This was a brief introduction to the customization system. You will be performing various exercises within this system. We just wanted to give you a better idea of how some of the exercises link to the setup that we have created for you to perform these various exercises. And if any questions come up during the exercises in relation to either the data elements, organization units, or data sets, please let us know.